Hi, and welcome to this very basic video that's going to cover a whistle stop tour of the brain, nerves, action potentials, ion channels, and electrolytes. The idea of this is to give you, as I say, a very basic idea, and there will be subsequent videos going in a lot more detail. So, when we talk about nerves and senses, first thing to look at is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consisting of the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system, all those other nerves. So let's just have a look at that. So the central nervous system, like we say, consists of the brain and the spinal column, the spinal cord, and then the peripheral nerves are all these ones that are running away, but also it will send signals to those areas. So we have sensory information all around us. Obviously, we have eyes which pick up um, light waves, and we have ears that uh, work on sound waves, movement of air. We have the sense of smell, obviously, which is chemically re related. Our olfactory senses are all in our nose. We have our nerves running through our body. For instance, uh, some people say they have sciatica, so they have pain from the sciatic nerve. So that's a different type of sense. We also sense where we are in space. We sense the temperature of things. We have pressure sensitive um, receptors. So if you know you've got your hand on a table and you're pushing a bit too hard. So there's lots and lots of different ways that we get sensory information. And obviously it travels to us from the outside. And that's called afferent. And then we've got efferent nerves, which are signals coming from the brain, from the spinal cord, going outwards. Afferent and efferent. So let's talk about the brain because we do need to know some of the basic terminology. So the word cortex comes from the Latin word for bark. So there's a three millimeter laminated area, for want of a better word. The cortex is just the things that you see like this, these folded up bits. The whole thing is a cortex and then you have certain areas of the brain which will be like the motor cortex which is all to do with moving your body around so it's about three millim millim millimeters thick and you have billions of interconnected nerve cells in the brain and it's very neatly folded to fit in the skull and um, i think everyone's seen a picture of a brain but uh, maybe they didn't know how much is crammed into the brain. It's only 2% of the adult body mass, and yet 15% of blood pumped from the heart goes to the brain. Huge consumption of blood, and about 20% of our oxygen usage is the brain. So right now, your brain is using 15% of your blood, 20% of your oxygen, but it's only 2% of your adult mass. So it really is power hungry, it really needs a lot of energy, a lot of oxygen, a lot of nutrients. So we're just going to take a dial back to some real basic... Um, science and we can talk about diffusion because that will become a bit more pertinent later on in the video if you've got a bath it's got molecules of water in it and you drop in some ink for instance initially you will have this high concentration of ink molecules here and it will look very dark in that area but if you were to just slightly stir the water you would get a thing called diffusion as the ink molecules spread out and the concentration of that area gets less and goes throughout the whole bath of water okay so that's something just to remember later on i'm sure everyone understands that so we talk about the nerves and electricity in the brain cells we imagine that there's lots of sparks and, you know, these sort of illustrations that we see tons of electricity running around. But really, it's it's not about electricity. It's more about the concentration of different electrolytes and um, how they move across different gradients. And we're going to explain that in a bit more detail now. So the nerves are obviously the things that are sending these signals. Well, how do they do that? How does it travel over distance? What ha actually happens? Well, nerves are all interconnected, but we'll have a look at one what we call um, a neuron. Okay, so you have a body of the neuron and we have these things called dendrites. And these are the things that sense what's going on. And they send that information to the cell body, which then goes along what's called the axon. And this goes off to an axon terminal. And then there would be another one of these neurons here to receive the signal. And we'll, we will talk about how that signal transmits, how quick it is. You've also got these things, Schwann cells, myelin sheaths. These are things that wrap around the axon. They speed up transmission. These are the sort of things that um, these cells here, which can be 
degraded and then you get a problem like MS, for instance. And you can see it under electron microscopes that this really happens. Um, so what you've got is these axons and you have myelin sheaths around it. And just to sort of try and make a bit more sense of what you said, here's a skin cell with lots of receptors. Something happens. I don't know. This is, you know, there's a cold breeze and you will have a signal goes along the axon goes across to the axon terminal to the next nerve and so on and so on. Um, you might then get a message going out to the to the muscle cell to say, can you quickly move away from this cold breeze? Let's go and find somewhere hot to be. Uh, and that's all done in the blink of an eye. And the myelin sheath there, you can see there's the axon in the middle. And it's a fatty sort of deposit, which is particularly good at insulating. Uh, and this is why when we talk about essential fats, for instance, some of the essential fats are used as building blocks and obviously you have nerves all over your body uh, and these are particularly important for for being electrically insulating the axon and this is just a microscopic image of uh, of the actual things degrading here so let's just talk about cells we always talk about cells well when somebody looked under a microscope for the first time they saw these little nucleuses and or nuclei I should say and then they realized that there was a sort of surrounding area which we now call the cell membrane but they literally thought well that looks like a tiny little prison cell that's that's where the word cell comes from and the cell membrane so this is part of the cell membrane is it's, it's a phospholipid bilayer all that means is it's got a phosphate and a lipid and then it's got another lipid and a phosphate and they encase the cell this is the outside of the cell, this is the inside of the cell, and you have receptors and channels to allow things to go in and out of the cell. Yeah, very basic, we're being very basic. There's a lot more going on than, than what I'm saying here, but it's just to get the principle across. So when we talk about neurotransmitters, dopamine and GABA and all these sort of things, it will make a bit more sense. So just going to zoom in on that cell membrane, you have different channels and although these look the same, you know, some are ion channels, some open and closed depending on voltage, some open and closed depending on what molecule is attached to it. But we're just going to get the principle across that outside the cell here, we have lots of sodiums, Na plus here, and we have a few potassiums, K plus there. And on the inside of the cell, we have a lot of potassiums and slightly fewer sodiums. So you have this differential uh, um, amount of concentration of sodium. Going back to that diffusion, for instance, we're now talking about concentration of sodium on the outside is greater than the concentration on the inside. And yes, there are other, now, there are other molecules, other atoms inside. There's a lot more going on. There's proteins, those sort of things. But this is to get the principle across. And we're going to look at sodium potassium pumps and the principle of how something propagates along a nerve. All right. So we're going to imagine that the cell, the neuron body is at this end. And then we're going to try and get to the axon terminal at the other end. How does that signal go through? Well, on the membrane, on the edge of the membrane, because of the concentration of different um, electrolytes, you have a slightly positive char charge on the outside, negative charge on the inside. And then when something happens, this is going to change. And let's show you what might actually happen. So we get we get a signal that um, you just put your hand on something very hot and the nerve needs to send a signal. So what's going to happen is sodium is going to go through this channel. And it's going to go to the inside of the cell. Again, very basic. It's just for illustration purposes to get the, the point across. It goes into that cell, and then momentarily what happens is you get a negative on the outside and plus on the inside. Just um, it's very, very much for illustrative purposes. So please be aware of that. I can't stress that enough. There is a lot more than this going on. But we're going to get the principle of why electrolytes, for instance, are important in what's called action potentials. That's, that's nerve signaling, basically, the, the actual transmission of a signal. And... It's going to propagate along the whole of that membrane. And we call these ions. Okay, Ions are charged atoms, or sorry, charged particles, defined as an atom or group of atoms that has acquired a net electrical charge by gaining or losing one or more ele electrons. So that's the geeky science bit out of the way. And what's going to happen is that there will be an exchange. Sometimes the sodium goes in and the potassium will go out. They like to go into similar concentrations. And it's uh, more about the movement of a concentration gradient. So what's happening? This will happen. So this has now gone negative and this has gone positive. 
and then it's going to reset, but that signal will move along. And so that negative at the top of the left, left corner there, just showing you, it just moves along the axon. And this happens in a blink of an eye, literally, you know, you would not be able to see this. So when we talk about electrolytes, we talk about your um, hydration. That's because all of these electrolytes, all these minerals, they have a shell of water around them. They have a molecular shell of water. So if you've got a lot of sodium, you've got a lot of potassium, you've got a lot of um, water. Well, we're not saying that's a bad thing, but it's just something to know. So this the most common thing that people know is if you have salt, it can lead to retaining a bit more water, which is why when people have a headache, we often recommend, you know, a glass of water with a little bit of salt in is very good because it might be the electrolytes a little bit low. That's exactly the same with like elite sportsmen when they come off the field and they've sweated a lot, they've lost a lot of salts, they've lost a lot of minerals, so they rehydrate um, as quickly as possible. And that's the reason why. So we've talked about the neuron. There's the neuron body, there is the axon, and there is you know, the axon terminals, but they're obviously all part of a big network. And you have the connection between neurons is what's at the axon terminal, and then you get another cell body. And it tends to be what's called a synapse that does that. So people probably have heard the term synaptic pathways if you're talking about brain function, for instance. In humans, uh, most of those synapses are chemical. We do have some electrical ones. I'm not going to get into that. Um, you have presynaptic and postsynaptic membranes, and we're going to talk about those very quickly. Then we'll get into, you know, trying to understand dopamine and GABA and things like that. So this is a big illustration of what I said earlier. There's a dendrite cell body, the axon. We've taken the myelin sheaths off just to make it easier to see. And then you've got the next uh, dendrites, neuron body, axon, so, so on and so forth. Here's the terminal. If we zoom in, what's actually happening, you have this synapse here, and you have a transmission across from the axon terminal across here, and then you, you propagate that signal all the way along the axon. And these transmissions, transmissions are neurotransmitters. That's what we talk about, neurotransmitters. So the syn synapse is very important. The signaling is very important. Hopefully this has made some sense because we're going to carry on this series and get into a little bit more detail. We're going to talk about things like dopamine because the transmission of signals, the neurotransmitters can either excite or inhibit actions. And I think most people know um, the expression dopamine hit. So you're, you eat something or you drink something or you smoke something and it gives you that dopamine hit. It excites you. But there's lots of mechanisms in the body that we can look at with functional MRIs to show what's actually going on in the brain and get a mechanism to the things that we talk about in the abstract, things like addiction, carbohydrates, those sort of things. Hopefully this video has been helpful. And if you have any comments, you want to like this, you want to share it, uh, feel free to do that. Um, like I say, for the big geeky scientists that are watching this, it is for illustrative purposes only. Yes, there is a lot more going on, but I'm trying to get the principles across of what actually a neuron does, how the transmission of signal happens, what electrolytes actually are, just to get it really basic for people. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And hopefully you'll be watching some more of my videos. There should be a playlist somewhere on the screen for you to have a look at.